Hey, what's going on? It's Marcus, and it's been a little bit since I've made a video, but felt inspired to make one uh, on a topic that comes up quite a bit, and I think this is one of the things that really gets guys to think about all of these questions around dating, relationships, and things like that. And it was one of the first things that came up for me as well. And it's this word that comes up that has like an interesting connotation, especially since the way it's framed, it's kind of like almost as if it's a disease or something. And the way guys refer to it is one-itis, right? So this is something where you might have experienced this as well, just feelings of um, really desiring someone. Maybe it's like a crush or maybe it's someone that you think about quite a bit in a romantic way and oftentimes this can lead to feelings of distress or turmoil when you're thinking about uh, this one person and sometimes it can lead to irrational decision making oftentimes it does uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing right because just because you're making a rational decision doesn't necessarily make it the right decision for that situation at that time. It could be the case that an emotional decision is appropriate. So this is why I talk about these topics a lot is because especially when it comes to relationships and people and dating, it's not necessarily about making the rational decision. And I think this can be a fallacy, especially when it comes to the context of the industry as a whole, the men's dating industry or whatever you want to call it. So what I want to talk about is a slightly different perspective on this topic of one-itis. Because here's what oftentimes guys talk about and when I was with RSD as well, this is one point of disagreement that I had is around this topic because I thought the way that this was handled was somewhat unhealthy in, in terms of the emotional um, manner in which we would give advice. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that I agree with when it comes to RSD philosophy and the teachings, but this was not one of them. And so the advice in the industry, and not, it's not just RSD, it's, it's very common in the space in general, whether it's like the red pill thing or uh, the industry as a whole, is they might say something like, if you feel like you're getting attached to just one girl, then go out and try to like date or hook up with a bunch of other girls and then you'll get over those feelings. So here's what comes up for me when I think about that is really you're just covering up those feelings with an action so that you're sedating yourself or you're making yourself feel better temporarily, but you're not really confronting or handling the situation head on. And something that I've been learning, um, especially going through some of these plant medicines, I know some people have asked me about ayahuasca and things like that. Um, and that's something that I don't necessarily just recommend for everyone. It's really a personal decision and it's up to you to know whether that's the appropriate thing for you at a certain time. But I'm bringing this up because I spoke with a shaman at uh, the first retreat that I went to and he was basically saying that usually during an experience, you might have a situation where your one of your deepest fears will come up for you and yet you have a choice to make. You can either go into it or run away from it. And he says, when that comes up for you, you should almost always just go into it because what you'll find is by just going into that fear, you actually sort of what happens is that the power of that fear goes away and it dissipates and it, it dissolves and it's not really what you think it is, right? So whether that's the fear of death is a common one or just a feeling of despair, whatever it is, if you go into it and you let it go, then that's how you resolve through those emotions. So I've had some experiences kind of like that and what I see is things like approach anxiety, which I talked about this in an earlier uh, video as well, is that you can reframe that with your language. It's not like a perfect solution because sometimes if you try to reframe it, 
we still feel those feelings. Um, you know, it's, it's not something where it's like a magic pill or anything like that, but, um, anyway, so I'm just talking about approaching anxiety is one case where it's almost like that fear, right? That, that shaman was talking about. It's an opportunity for you to either go through it and work through it, or you could run away from it. Same thing with one-itis, right? This whole, and I, I really, for me, that's not the, the most appropriate word for that feeling because it makes it sound like a disease. It makes it sound like it's, it's some medical condition similar to approach anxiety. It's like, that's, that sounds like something a psychologist would um, prescribe or what diagnose, right? So it sounds like a, a diagnosis of some sort, like you have this disease like one-itis, approaching anxiety, these are very heavy terms. And so for me, it's just like feelings of resistance or feelings that come up when you maybe really desire someone. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I felt this recently. And so I've been working through it myself and I just want to share this. I'm not perfect at it either. It's, it's a continual learning process, but I just want to share this with you because this might help given your situation. And there's different ways of dealing with this. And so I just want to share w the way that I've been handling it or working through it because I just found that some of the advice or most of the advice out there just wasn't really, I, I just didn't feel al aligned with it because most of the time it has you going out, taking external action where the way I see it, those feelings are just an indication of something that's happening internally, right? These are all internal states that we're dealing with or that's not necessarily dealing with that we're working through, right? So maybe it's, it's that feeling once again of that conflict. And here's another way of looking at it. I've talked about this before about how the HeartMath Institute has mapped out your wavelengths of, it's like, I think your brain versus your heart and when you're in certain emotional states, there's a dissonance between your brain waves and your heartbeat and something like that. And so I just see that in the case of these feelings that come up, sometimes it's just that dissonance that you're experiencing. And the way to get back into alignment where your heartbeat is in synchronicity with your brain waves is really just, once again, working through it, right? Instead of researching a bunch of stuff online and like, it's not a bad thing that you're watching this video or that you're browsing on YouTube trying to find a solution. But oftentimes what I find is if I turn it off, if I turn off my computer, if I turn off my phone and I just sit with myself for an entire evening. So I literally just did this last couple of days uh, before the new year <clears throat> where I had like six hours or eight hours set aside. I wasn't really timing it, but um, I just turned off my phone, my computer, just had a journal and had a pen and just wrote down how I felt. And that allowed me the space for things to come up. And yeah, I will say that it's not like a pleasurable experience at all. It's really uncomfortable because what will happen usually is once you turn off your phone and computer, you're going to start to feel these emotions come to the surface. And once again, it's not pleasant. It feels very uncomfortable and it can be very, very intense because it could be feelings of anger, resentments, self-hatred, things like that. And these are actual things that have come up for me as well. So if you feel those things, then don't just necessarily take it as a sign that these are bad right? These labels that we give it, bad or good emotions, oftentimes are just completely arbitrary. Emotions are just emotions. Anger is just anger. Sadness is just sadness. It's not necessarily a bad or a good thing, right? What, where do we come up with this, this moral valuation system where we say this is a good emotion and this is a bad emotion? Really, these are just emotions. And so if we treat them as such, if we say, okay, well, I'm feeling angry. Let me just write about that. I feel angry. Um, for me, I just, it's almost like a self dialogue where I write it out and allows me to just express myself onto paper. So once again, just to recap this whole thing, these feelings that come up for you 
and that you just feel like you sometimes it just feels almost like a self-destructive sort of thing that maybe that's a bit of a heavy way of putting it but it just feels like it's it's just uncomfortable there's something like misaligned there's there's some tension or conflict within you if you're dealing with that sense of internal conflict then really the way i take it personally from my perspective is that there's just something there to work through and my particular method i tend to go to if i you know if i just want to work through it right now or today is turning off technology having a journal having a pen writing it down or writing it out of course you could talk it out with other people i've actually been doing that more and more as well i just kind of share how i'm feeling really it's just being more honest with how you feel and this is cultivating emotional intelligence being able to describe how you feel and expressing those emotions is from my perspective a healthy way of working through it so if you have a therapist that's great um, that could be one way of doing it. it you just have to really trust that person or if you just have friends or family that you want to talk to and work through it with them <clears throat> then you could do that as well um, and there's other ways of doing it as well meditation you could put that in there uh, even things like yoga just like meditative practices of, of sorts and once again there are substances like plant medicines and things like that that you can use to to work through things too but it's, it's really those things are like a very personal decision i don't recommend it for everyone um, but if you want to try something right away then journaling could be a great place to start um, really up to you how you best express yourself or the most comfortable way of, of expressing yourself and letting out these emotions and learning more about how to talk about your emotions right so <clears throat> so ultimately you might be thinking at this point okay well that's great and all but what do you actually do when you have this situation that comes up let's say there's like a girl and you have a crush on her but maybe she's with someone else or maybe you know she's she doesn't really reciprocate those feelings back to you it's like a form of unrequited love then once again it's the way i see it is if you focus on your own happiness by using some of these uh, ways of working through your emotions then almost always things will come into alignment and the actions will unfold themselves I know that sounds like a very abstract and ethereal way of describing it, but I've just seen this in practice actually work, right? So, so if you're thinking about it in those terms, I've just found that, yes, maybe it's a bit slower because you're not taking an action right away, but slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And so actually what I found is that it makes the process smoother. And at the end of the day, it actually does accelerate the process. Right, so slow is smooth and smooth is fast because sometimes when we try to rush through something and we try to take an action right away, then it's, it leads to consequences that we don't foresee and we tend to rush things and it tends to make things more messy. Right, You could do it that way too. There's nothing wrong with that. I've probably done that myself in, in a lot of situations in the past too. But, uh, but the way I see it now is it gives me a great opportunity to be able to work through these things because these are things that maybe there's other attachments within me that I could work through that's like a hidden bliss, blessing almost because uh, once again, the way I see it is it gives you that opportunity to, to, to basically work through some of the things that you're going through. So I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna end this video now, but uh, hopefully this helps and yeah, we'll talk soon, take care.